see what's going on there. Okay. So what I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using Node.js. So first off, let's go there real quick, see why. Node.js.org. It's just a front end stack. You just, you know, wait, <laughs> okay, it's working. Well, if you go to Node.js.org, you can download the software and, and, and start developing. Um, and we're going to also use uh, uh, Bitcore, which is a, a, a so, uh, yeah, Bitcore.io, which is basically a library that's going to have all these uh, tools written for us, so we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about performing all these, you know, uh, 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 gyrations to create transactions. It'll do it for us. So if you're building an app, a Bitcoin app for tomorrow, Node.js is a good starting point. Downloading Bitcore. Yeah. Um, Christopher Allen, one of our instructors. Christopher Allen, you may know, is the co-author of the SSL certification, the SSL standard. Um, can you go to his GitHub? If you go to Christopher Allen Git, Git, GitHub, you can see he's got a script that will help you set up your machine. Uh, if you have a Mac. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. PC users. Um, uh, so okay. Christopher Allen's GitHub Oh yeah. Actually, oh. I think it's under Blockchain University. It's also on the Blockchain University GitHub, which Christopher, he's got Life with Alacrity is one of his yeah. blogs. But you can just check out his GitHub. I'm not that one. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Frey. There is a... The same way. There's a script there that you can run on your machine to quickly set it up. If someone wants to tweet that link out, is Divraj in here? Divraj? Okay, cool. So he, he tweeted out the 84 um, ideas that you could create, uh, 84 blockchain ideas by Ledger Capital. Thanks for that. Also, there's this GitHub link, and we'll throw that in the Twitter stream. We're using the handle Hackcoin. I'm using the handle Hackcoin. There's another handle, Hackcoin Mumbai 2015. It's kind of long for hashtag, so I'm just using Hackcoin. So we've got Node.js here. Yeah. And so then, yeah. All right, so let's take a look. We got Node installed. Uh, you know, I can just you know double check. I got my package manager uh, also installed. So we got all that installed. So let's take a look at uh, writing some actual code. So I just created it. It's all JavaScript. I'll make it bigger, I guess. I make it. All right. So first thing uh, first, let's just close up all these extra windows. And uh, okay. All right. So let's take a look. So I'm going to create a, a, a variable uh, called a bitcore, and uh, I'm just going to require. Yeah. I'm going to require this live. Oh, well, actually. I should have said this. So uh, npm uh, list. Uh, we, we, oh, yeah, that's right. You can't do it. Let's say uh, let's download Bitcore. So you have Node installed. That's that's installed. But you also now need to do it. npm install uh, Bitcore. And what I'll do is it'll go. Well, I have to do it as a super user. But it'll go out, grab this package, this library, download it onto your local computer. Now you can play with it. So it's going to complain, but I already have it installed, so I don't care. Um, basically, it's just a wonderful library to use. Butcher. Oh, my goodness. I do need a break. Uh, so I'm just going to create a variable called Bitcore. Uh, and we're going to create a variable called uh, private keys. Say hmm? that. What? Oh, I turned that off. It's odd. It's odd. Oh. Oh, if you have smart quotes on it, it'll, it'll make everything crazy. Oh my goodness, that's so weird. I've never seen that behavior. It's kind of unnerving. 
That is weird. Mm. I got run something. Later. Well, whatever. Let's go. All right. So uh, we're going to create a private key. Uh, so new Bitcore uh, private key. Is it is doing that? All right. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to run. Uh, we're going to do the old the oldest trick in the book in teaching, which is we are going to just say uh, whatever. I got. We'll just open this one up. Boom! It's already done for it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, that's kind of disturbing. I don't know why it's. I don't know why it's doing that. I've used it many a time, though. So. There's only three lines here, actually. First one is, I'm just saying, I require the BitCore library. We're going to create a private key. Uh, after a while, you, you, you can remember this. Oh, actually, there is one thing I want to put here. So I want to go BitCore Networks uh, Testnet. Um, Basically, what I want to tell this program here is I want to use the test net, not the actual real-life main net. So I'll put that there. So I'm going to take my private key. I'm then going to create this new variable called export it. I'm going to take the private key and change it to a wallet import format form. And in, in fact, I'm going to then take my private key and I'm going to make a Bitcoin address. So it's doing two things here. I'm creating a private key, which is effectively a random number. I'm just generating it within a certain number of parameters, which is very loose. It's, you can pick almost any number. It'll be a perfectly valid private key. Just pick a crazy one, right? A, be a random number. Uh, and then I'm going to create this private key in such a way that I could then read it with my wallet software. Uh, and then I'm going to create a Bitcoin address from it. So you can always go from your private key to public key to Bitcoin address. You can't go reverse. All right, and then we're going to export this to the console, uh, the following. And let's see. Uh, all right, perfect. So I forget where I, oh, I, let's see, where am I? Directory, I think I should go to, uh, uh, let's see, documents. Oh, where did I put this? Hold on, let me just open this up. I was. It's only three lines. I'm usually good. Uh, go here. Oh, I put it here. My desktop. Uh, here, here. Oh my goodness! It's like everything's falling apart on me today. All right, and then we're going to hit Node, and we're going to do. I think it was this one. Oh no, that's not it. Node. Um, maybe it's this one. There we go. All right. This is this is the program, but I, I didn't do all that. I just created a private key. Let's pretend we didn't know how to do the rest. Let's do it from a different route altogether. That's a random number, effectively. I'm going to take my private key. I'm going to copy that over. I'm going to go over here. Oh, there's Chris. I'm going to go to Brain Wallet. Brain Wallet is a great development tool. Uh, you can use it quite a bit. Um, I'm going to move this over. Um, close, close. I'll use that. I need that later. Um, I'm going to change this to the test net. I'm then going to enter my private key here. And it will have generated now my address. So I now have the address. So I could use this tool to create my addresses if I just have a private key. Uh, I could take this address, copy it here. I could go to my block explorer, type it in here, and it should have nothing in there, right? It has nothing in there. And now I could fund it with my, my I have a testnet wallet with some value here. And I could hit send. It's broadcasting and push that to the network. So it's a, it's a way to, to you know, play with this just to show the movement of value very quickly. So let's do it all in Node now. So, okay. So by the way, we didn't have to wait 10 minutes to see that, right? In fact, you know, um, uh, 
we, we, we're going to see that we can do a lot with that. All right. So that was Brain Wallet, very useful tool. Anyone use Brain Wallet yet? It's a great tool. Uh, in the old days, people would like type in like you know, banana, banana, you know, whatever, banana, to create a private key. You should never do that because humans are very bad at entropy. Any password you make or anything you make will be cracked, without a doubt. People are using this to make Bitcoin wallets. Uh, very bad idea, all the way around. Don't do it. So I just know that you're just going to say, hey, all that's happening, and you don't guess it, it's actually with the Bitcoin, and it's with the blockchain. And so this transaction here uh, made it to the mempool, so it's pending. It hasn't made it to a block yet. Eventually, a miner will see it, put it on block, and then it'll be confirmed. And then it'll say how many confirmations or how many blocks on top have been uh, added to it. So, okay. before that happens, the value has it, Yeah. So you can see that that transaction has made it to the network, and the network recognized it as a valid transaction, and it's making its way to a block. Now, here's the double spend idea. I then take that exact same end spend transaction output, I push it to another transaction, and I hope that that miner beats the, the other miner that wins. That's a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. No, no, there's no vendor. It's just uh, th whatever miner wins this round will put in a block. I have to be in control of a miner that's in collusion with me that's going to permit me to now take that transaction or that unspent transaction output, put a new transaction. So when that does make it to a block, they'll ignore that, work on their block with my, my double spend. And I have to hope that they somehow find the next block really fast. That's a lot of hoping. Hope is the first step towards defeat. I think it was Henry Rollins. Uh, all right. Can you just talk a little bit about testnet and we'll take like another break? Yeah, yeah. Pizza break action. The official pizza break is that. Excellent. So, yay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at uh, the, the address. So we'll see, uh, where is it? There we go. Uh, we're on the Bitcoin testnet. So when Bitcoin was uh, uh, designed, uh, the designers realized, the, the core developers realized, you, you want to prog this programmable money, but you don't want to actually use real money if you make a mistake in your program when you're beta testing. Therefore, the testnet uh, is a complementary or a, a, another blockchain which has all the same behaviors as the, the main net, the real blockchain, except it has no value. Uh, so you could run all your code using the test net, double check it works, and then switch over to the main net. There are some really quite neat, you know, fun facts about the test net. Uh, one, um, you can play with the timing. You don't, the fee structure is a little bit looser. You don't have to put a fee in here. Um, although, recently I found that you do need to put a fee in here because uh, uh, otherwise the time takes too long. You know, stuff like that. Anyone use the test net? Yeah, use the test net so you're not wasting or actually potentially losing real value, Bitcoin. By the way, when you get your test net wallet, right, it says that I transfer one test net Bitcoin worth 288 bucks. These are worth nothing, right? So don't hoard test net coins. But you might go, where do I get my first test net coin? In fact, I think what we'll do is for a small fee. For a small fee, I'll say, no. One pizza? One pizza. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if you go to, uh, just Google Bit, Bitcoin Testnet Faucet. Um, I totally misspelled all of that. Uh, but but I, I like this one Testnet uh, Faucet very much, this one. Um, here's where you can get some Testnet coins. If you have an Android device, I would highly recommend downloading the Bitcoin Testnet Wallet in the Android Play Store. The reason why is it's kind of nice to have something easy to play with to move value very quickly on, you know. Yeah. They, they don't currently have one for iOS. Uh, or you could just manually do it. Uh, but having this really helps because you saw how I, I, I was able to fund this one really quickly now by just using that, that QR code. I now can use this in my program and, and look at it. So here's my transaction ID. Let's look at the raw data, open that up. So, so download Testnet Wallet on your Android device, go to that faucet, fund it, and now you have an easy way to, to put value on your, your tests. Oh, yeah. It, oh, that's, oh, brilliant. Okay, so the question is, who's running the miners on the Testnet? 
the test net behaves just like the main net, so they're miners. Effectively, it's folks that you know were mining on Bitcoin, but you know now can't mine. They've just thrown their their mining rigs onto the test net to collect test net coins. There's something very gratifying about watching a computer work, right? I mean, very gratifying. So there are my actually there was a problem about six months, about four months ago. Uh, the test net experienced a tremendous growth of hashing power because as more and more people uh, realized that they couldn't make any uh, money on the main net because of the, the rise of these ASIC farms and whatnot, they were throwing too much hashing power on the test net network and then it caused the, the test net network to, to collapse because there was just the, the difficulty was rising too quickly, which ultimately led to the test net network having to, the test net blockchain having to fork itself. So. Um, it's one of those weird, it just so happened, it happened uh, in April, and I was doing a demo, and it wasn't working, and it was because of that. It's a real me me mess. Which one? Yes, but, yes. So the question is, they do all this work, and they get coins that have no value, right? Well, I, I, we all have hobbies, I believe, right? And that, that, oh, thank you. So um, that's it. This is the actual transaction. We see the value move. So here's the transaction ID. Um, uh, we see what block it got itself into, the time it got into, and, and the output. So we can use this now to generate a new transaction with this information. See, this is you can read a story about the first thing that was ever sold with Bitcoin. What was it? Pizza. And how much was it sold for? Like 20,000 bitcoins were given. This guy said, if anybody delivers me a pizza, I'll give him 10,000 bitcoins. And then no one like did it. So like the next day he's like, well, I'll give you 20,000 bitcoins. So he basically got a, he sold a, he bought a pizza for like 2 million US dollars. So yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the pizza index is quite nice. So uh, all right, let's take a 10 for a five minute break. And like a pizza break, official. Enormous I've never had that uh, behavior. Wait, wait. Yeah, that's quite scary. I mean, why is it doing autocorrect? Mm. Yeah. Right. Let's see what, what kind I'm of passwords should one use for one's wallet, right? Um, and, and that is a particularly uh, uh, you know, interesting question because let's take a look. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm you know, let's look at Brain Wallet here. You could create a password right here, create an address, and fund it. That, that's, that's possible. That password will be cracked momentarily. Um, so what, what, what is one to do? The reality is you, you, you have to create a password that's completely random. And for that, you really should just use a password manager or a password generator, of which there are many. I like personally to use uh, LastPass. Uh, people, of course, would point out and say, oh, but that's not truly open source, and you've got to use KeyBase, uh, KeyPass. Uh, and yeah, that's true, but it, it, it's a great compromise with convenience and security. I, that's not to say I don't go crazy sometimes. And you, know, you can get hardware random number generators where it will just sample the universe and, and just create a string of random numbers as long as you want. And, and you know, when, I, when, I re, when security really matters, I'll plug that in and just have a random number generator that's sampling you know, cosmic rays or whatever. Uh, there, there's also, of course, if you haven't already, every single uh, device and, and, and service out there, you can do two-factor authentication. You really should turn on two-factor to everything. Um, a lot of people don't like two-factor because they don't like to type in a code or something. Uh, so much so that Google has partnered with YubiKey with, to make a universal YubiKey, the blue one. So every, if you log in uh, through Chrome, you just plug the key in. This is your two-factor. You yank it out and shuts it out. So because apparently humans like physical tokens, physical artifacts. You know, we just like... In India, the finance is regulated by RBI Oh, that's even better. You should really do that. Um, and then, of course, you know, wallets themselves, you go, well, I could have all this turned on, two-factor turned on. I got a really great password, and I type it in, and it got, it got owned. 
right? So you can also have, you know, we didn't talk about this, but hardware wallets, of which there are many. Here's just two. Oh, I got another one here. You know, where you got a hardware wallet where, you know, the signing of the, of the, 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 the transaction takes place on this chip. Um, you know, something re really quite cool that came out a uh, month or two ago was Google Vault. They're going to allow you to use a regular old micro SD card. Uh, apparently, and Christopher Allen is the one who told me this, that micro SD cards have a, basically a JavaScript uh, interpreter on chip. That was one way to get around latency issues. They just built it into the chip. So I think Google Vault probably uses something like that to perform the, 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 the encryption on chip. So it basically, a hardware wallet has your, your keys, signing takes place here, so even if your computer is compromised, you can't get to it. And that, oh, actually, yeah, this is one that, I, you know, I like, um, i got to type slower, I may. Mean, you know, this is a, a nice a hardware wallet. Um, yeah, ooh, they, they, they bought out uh, HW.1. You can still get these. They're, they're the exact same thing. It, it just looks cooler. I think it's metal, right? Um, but yeah, so Ledger, they, they make hardware wallets. They're in uh, San Francisco and in, in, in Paris. Um, ni nice folks. Oh, actually, if you're thinking about a project idea, um, this is one, uh, one that I'm really quite interested in. Well, let's go back. Well, if you go to Ledger Wallet, you'll see they have uh, an idea whereby you can use this as a key to sign and I, in essence be identification. So you could use this as your ID, right? So it, it's, the project is called uh, BitID. It's an open protocol using this to basically uh, give access to websites. It's a really great, you know, get on the GitHub uh, and, and just play with it. That would be a great project, just you know, playing with that. Mm -hmm. So the question is, okay, so I got a hardware wallet, but how do I get, it doesn't look like it's connected, right? And so you gotta plug it in and use a little bit of the software on the side. So, you know, this is a, a one, one wallet. Let's just, um, just open this up. All right. All right. So this is just a Chrome app. I open it up. I put in my pin, which the pin it does nothing. It's just a joke. So just put a crap. Pin. Just put a, a terrible pin. Who cares? Um, you open it up. It's going to say. Uh, it's going to say authenticate with your two-factor, right? And I think I turned off the, uh, the thing. So and create. My goodness, it's still create a battleship code key. Well, you just make it when you set it up. You know, you can have your two-factor be your phone, or if your phone's broken or busted up, you can always, you know, just create like a little uh, one-time pad. Just yeah, that's uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's a useful tool because you don't always have access. Oh, oftentimes, if your 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 uh, uh, clocks get out of sync, which I don't know why in this day and age, but you know, it's possible. Well. It would then ask me for a challenge response, and I would give my responses to its challenges, and then I would have access to and see what's on it, right? But I, it, it does have to go look at the blockchain to read all the uh, addresses that it has control over to determine the value as of right now. Oh, there. That is, oh, I guess when I send it, it'll open it up. This is just one idea. And then when I pull this out, what do you think will happen? Hopefully it locks me out, right? I mean, there you go. So, so that way, even if your computer's compromised, hardware wallets offer a solution to uh, 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 protection. So you can't hack it. What about Raspberry Pi? Oh, yes. Um, Raspberry Pi, um, I, I, oh, yeah. Let's go to uh, bit, bitaddress.org. We just, we made a, 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 an address in Node.js, right? You might go, well, I, I, I don't want to do all that every time. You can create a paper wallet using this uh, service here. You can download the code onto a Raspberry Pi, you know, $35 you know, uh, computer, download this Java uh, 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 code here in a second, or run it here you know, on their server, and, and generate wallets on paper. 
I think this is really quite cool. This was one of my first uses of my Raspberry Pi, was to create a, a air-gapped offline computer, generate, you know, addresses on paper that I could then send coins to in such a way that nobody could steal them. Because even if, you know, I did it on this computer, even if, you know, maybe, you know, uh, there's some exotic attack that USBs still can be attacked. Uh, you really need a totally air-gapped computer. Oh, well, go to bitaddress.org. It's a great server. It's, it's all the JavaScript's right here if you look at it. Um, there we go. So LastPass gets hacked regularly. <laughs> yeah. So that's why people would say, oh, well, yeah, I know. But that's why you have these other, so you can always have retreating forms of protection. So even if my LastPass is hacked, I've got so many other backup systems, right? So always have two-factor, have, you know, different, you know, compartmentalized. That's, I'm very good at that. So my... I joke that my therapist tells me all the time. Very good compartment, but all right. So, um, oh, this is. I wish this was loading up. Hmm. Oh, bit ID. That's a really cool feature. Um, and and again, oh, there's even this certain, this idea that even if all all of this might be broken, why not use? Uh, this is quite a neat hardware wallet. Why don't you just plug it directly into a printer and not even look at a computer? Computers can be hacked all the time, but printer is harder to hack. Um, and you could create uh, this hardware wallet called Entropy, which generates every time you plug it in uh, a new uh, Bitcoin address. Um, so there you go. You press a button, it creates a new one, has a random number generator built in. So there are a lot of ideas out there for wallets and, and address creation units. Uh, the best one, again, is not one that you make because humans are very bad at random numbers by the design. So I thought we'd look at some APIs that we might want to use because, or we could make one transaction by scratch. Uh, maybe do one transaction by scratch. Um, so right now, uh, let's take a look at what we got. We got this thing right here, which has got one testnet Bitcoin in it, right? Um, and we've got this bit of code here. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to run a test. Uh, <clears throat> so let's create another address, random. So we're going to go here, uh, go to Brain Wallet, go to Private Key. It's on the test net. Don't forget that, of course. Plug it in here. It's going to create our new address. Uh, we're then going to go to uh, chain.so. And we're going to see that it has nothing in it. And we're going to write a transaction by scratch. And then you should never do that again, right? You should just use API. It should be done. Okay, there we go. Uh, done, done, done. It should have nothing in it. And it's got nothing in it. Perfect. So we got two addresses. One has one Bitcoin in it. One has nothing in it. We're going to move it back and forth, right? So let's take a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this one. This is the raw data we've got right here. We're going to uh, uh, look at my pre-made ones because I don't want to make any more mistakes. Uh, we don't want this one. Don't want this one. Uh, don't want this one. Uh, this one we want. Okay, okay. So let's take a look. So we've installed BitCore. We've got uh, BitCore here. Here is the private key. We're going to paste our private key in. Oh, that's our address. Well, it's too big, actually. I got to. Make... <coughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. All right. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, my uh, private key. I'm just going to copy. Where's my private key? The other one. Oh. Oh boy. You know, where is it? It just. Well, let's not do this. I. Hmm. Let's just. All right. Let's just do this. 
Uh, I'm going to just go from scratch. I'll, uh, I'm just going to refund this one. What? What? So all right, let's move that there. Send, sign, should send, send, okay. And I'm gonna go chain, brain wallet, all right. So this is the one that uh I'm gonna, let's see. We're going to go from a funded one to an unfunded one. Just from scratch. Eventually. Okay, private key. Go to Bitcoin. Test that. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right, there we go. So this one, of course, has nothing in it. I just made it again. Fresh one. Empty. All right. So let's go back. So this is the private key with the address that has value in it. Uh, so I'm going to put that for my private key. All right. Perfect. Uh, this is my uh, transaction with value in it. So I'm going to go here. This is the one with value. And I go to the raw data. I have to get this information off of the uh, uh, blockchain explorer. So I'm going to copy that, paste it over. Uh, then I come back here. It is value is the sequence or output number one. It has one Bitcoin in it. And the uh, uh, script is right here. So I'm going to copy that. So zero uh, script is that. The address, I should have copied that over to. I'm just going to copy that. Uh, all right, put that there. And I'm going to put in 100,000 Satoshis, but this has how much in it? One Bitcoin. So where's that extra Bitcoin going to go to? Because I'm only transferring 100,000 Satoshis, but I've actually got quite a bit more here. I've got a one full Bitcoin, so 10 to the power 8. It's going to cut no. It's going to be minus here. I'm not. I'm not putting a change address. Um, so it will be lost. That's fine. Um, I don't care about that. And I'm going to send it to this address that has nothing in it. So copy. I'm going to paste it here. Um, oh, actually, you have to put down. Uh, uh, let's put a mount. <laughs> okay, I'll put the one. Okay. But I'm actually only going to transfer uh, 50,000 Satoshis, so even less. So I'm going to go from one Bitcoin, 10 to the power 8 Satoshis, to 50,000 Satoshis. All that rest will be lost to a miner's <coughs> fee. So it would be good if you're a miner, I guess. Uh, and also, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a, uh, a, a message in here, a message in the bottle. So I'm going to go to Coin Secrets. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, coinsecrets.org a blockchain explorer that allows us to look at the metadata. <coughs> well, whatever. It's still working. And, oh, yeah, and then also... Uh, uh, broad. And we, we need to push it out to the transaction. All right, so one Bitcoin. We're going to go to this one with nothing in it. We did all the uh, uh, addresses using uh, Brain Wallet just to figure it out. We're going to put a message in there, and we're going to see it all fall out. So the message is what? What shall we put here? Hello. All right, that's still working. What's your name? R-A. Okay. That's it. Boom. <laughs> Feel good? You're about to go on the blockchain. 
Uh, we're gonna, okay, so we're going to just do a double check that we didn't make any dumb mistakes because I've been known to do that. We've got BitCore. We've got the private key, which we, we just created. We got, uh, we're creating a private key <coughs> using uh, this in you know, wallet import format. Uh, bum, uh, transaction ID, it's in uh, sequence number zero. We looked at that on the blockchain score. Here's the address, the script, and the amount, one Bitcoin. We're then going to go to, uh, from that object, the unspent transaction output. We're going to move it from here to this address, only 50,000 Satoshis, sign the whole thing, and then hex serialize it. And we're done. Which one was? Oh no, the, the transaction, uh, we had to uh, get it off the blockchain for, oh, you know, you're absolutely right. This transaction ID is probably going to change until it gets into a block, so I have to wait the 10 minutes. So the question is, how did I know the transaction ID right here if it's still pending, right? It's unconfirmed. You're absolutely right. That's, that's why when you're doing this uh, test run, you should create like 20 of these and fund them all very quickly and then that way you've always got one that's confirmed. Oh my goodness, that's right. I have to wait for this to get into a block. I, I, so so chain signs it a temporary? It signs a temporary one, but if it goes into a different block, it gets a different transaction ID. Oh. I made I, uh, What? So whenever, whatever miner uh, gets it, gets the right of uh, assignment of the transaction ID. The uh, transaction ID is assigned by the miner. So that's why when you're testing it out, make a lot of these. Fund them all with the same amount, and then you can easily move a value back and forth. And then by the time you get to the 10 minutes, the, the, you can you know cycle through. Oh boy, well that was a, a quinky dink. Well, that's why we always go back uh, to uh, cheat. All right, here are all these that I know for a fact um, have value in them. <laughs> so let's just go, because I think, if, I, if it's not there yet, still not there. All right, well, let's just go to the cheat. Boom. I made these before, you know, <coughs> coming out, so there's a... All right, look at that. That one, uh, it's got money in it. And it's pretty old, too, I'll tell you that. So uh, here's the, this transaction ID. So we're just going to make it using this one. Let's just... Uh-huh. Yeah, I got to change all that out now. <laughs> Yay. So let me go change out all this good stuff. So this one's old. It's been around the block. It, it's, it's here. So. so I'm just going to change all this good stuff out. This is, oh, and look at this one. The output is one, not zero. That happens a lot. So we got to change that. Hmm. This output? Oh, the output index refers to where it, the actual unspent transaction output is. So in this case, this this uh, has the value of the hundred thousand satoshis uh, in index one. It's not always starting at zero. Sometimes is it one. So you gotta you gotta use a block explorer to figure that out. You can have multiple inputs, right? So you could have had an address where you put money in constantly as a new tran unspent transaction output. And so when that address you look at it and you have multiple inputs, you can pick and choose. A little so yeah, that's that's something to be mindful of. Um, can I get this? Can I get the uh, script? And then after this, we're just going to look at APIs because most likely, you know, it's fun to do this, but you never have to do it. You need to use an API. Um, and, and then uh, let's type in Satoshi's. Was it with an S or not? Anybody remember? 
Oh, yeah, thank you. See? So, uh, Satoshi's, uh, one, two, three. All right, boom. Everything's here. Did I put everything in here? Uh, so, I put in the address, put in the script, put in the number, put in the transaction ID. They put in the, the ooh, did I put this in? Yes? The address in that the loan we're spending out. Oh yes, so that that has a hundred thousand satoshi. And now we are good to go, I believe. Yeah. Yes. No, no, it'd be one. So okay, so the question is: Would we have multiple transaction IDs? No, you'd have one. One transaction ID, um, but you can have multiple outputs of these unspent transaction inputs, un, un, unspent transaction outputs, so you can have multiple sequence numbers with value in it. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, which one am I using? So. All right. All right, so I just I just close that. Uh, all right. All right. So we are going. We just created this transaction. Serialized hex. We're going to copy that. We got to push it out to the network. So we're now going to go to a broadcaster like Block Cipher. We're going to push this raw transaction out into the universe. Uh, paste, broadcast, cross our fingers. I hope it works. <laughs> Should work. We're hoping again. Oh, it's a terrible situation to be in. Hope. Oh. We're waiting. It's just, it might be the network. Yeah, it's, it goes a little bit, a little bit faster. You know, it's hot. Yeah, we're going to see movement of value, and we're going to have it written to the blockchain, and and then a, a chocolate cake is going to fall from the sky once this happens. You're gonna, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> We did all that, yeah. All that code was done. We're doing the transfer now. I'm, I'm still holding out. It's still rotating. I was on zone. It's, I'm, I'm feeling pretty lucky. You know, every time I change lanes in the grocery store, it just it just I go slower. I just I just stick with it. I'm I'm, I'm sticking here. Oh, I'm going to close this one. Maybe that's slowing it down. <laughs> oh, I need a coin secrets actually. That's okay. Well, let's, Just cycle it.
put it over. We'll probably wrap up the coding bit in about 10 minutes. Hi. Right. Oh, perfect. And uh, well, cut here. I'll let you do it right here. So, um, what's the network? Micromac. Perfect. And then you're going to type in the password. What? Do it. Boom. Broadcast to the network. We'll go to the test set. It's uh, not there yet. That's, that's. It says it broadcast successfully. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it, if it hiccuped. Oh my goodness. It might be a latency. Come on. Well, it says it's still there. It says it has. Oh, let's just broadcast it again. I don't think the broadcast went through. All right, this is right. Mm. All right, it has not somehow Having technical difficulties. I swear it does work. I mean, it's. Uh, you want to search the test net for something you remember might be there? Let's 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 look at the test net, the op return using this uh, uh, tool. Uh, this is a block explorer that outputs the metadata. So this is how, if you want to write to the op return, you use this tool here to find out what people are writing to it. So somebody wrote Chuck Norris once went skydiving. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, so Chuck Norris's unit tests don't run. Um, uh, <laughs> so somebody has a deep uh, axe to grind against Chuck Norris. Uh, but uh, yeah, and let's look at the main net. This is a, people actually paid money to do this one now. I mean, you could write this here. Uh, here. Uh, we see, you know, people have put uh, what looks like hashes, so we don't really understand it. Open assets is a great way if you want to do what's known as coloring coins. We didn't talk about that. But open assets protocol is a mechanism with which you can tag a coin with a certain other uh, meta value. So you could say this Bitcoin is worth actually 100 shares of stock. So it's a way to have asset tracking. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, 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 idea. Um, um, you know, somebody asked about this, so, you know, proof of existence also would write the data, and you can see it here. Um, here's where you put in your, 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 your document, you drop it in here, it hashes it, and then somebody here, it looks like paid to have this information put into the blockchain, and here is the transaction, so you can drill down all the way and see. So it's a way to, to lock in information for all eternity. Insight is BitPay's broadcasting engine. So if you want to use BitCore, you can use Insight to then broadcast your transaction. Instead, of me, you know how I cut and paste it into a broadcaster? You could just put that one line in your, your code and you're done. You know, no for any net. For, you, you could do test net or main net. This is, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, do look at the APIs. There are many. I think um, you know, Block Cipher is a company local to us, and they really put a lot of effort into making high quality APIs um, uh, for use. Um, you know, when you go through their documentation, it's pretty it's pretty complete. Uh, you can use this to create you know uh, addresses, so you can 
use theirs to create an address. Um, you know. All right. So my wife, you know, before we applied to Blockchain University, she wanted to, you know, do something with Bitcoin programming-wise. Before we applied, I, I kept telling her just apply. I mean, we went to the open uh, open house, and I said, well, we own Bitcoin. We bought stuff. We, we even sent you know Mount Gox all of our stuff over the phone and called them on the red phone, and you know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, no privacy. <laughs> just yeah. That, uh, so my, my passport's somewhere in Japan, is <laughs> circulating. And I said, we, we're, we're, but she's like, no, we've got to use something, we've got to program. So she, this was a test site she came up with and built very quickly using just APIs, just to prove a point, whereby you can uh, you know, buy a product and, and then do the entire transaction in Bitcoin. Why is this important? Why is this uh, uh, quite interesting? With Bitcoin, of course, it's, it's, it's treated almost like digital cash over the internet. It's internet's magic money. Uh, you can't do a chargeback with it. So let's say you had a small store on the, on the internet, you have 100 widgets, and somebody calls you up and says, I'd like to buy 100 widgets, your entire stock, here's my visa number. Would you make that trade? Probably not if you were smart, because what would happen? Uh, because if you were to sell the 100 widgets and they do a chargeback after they shipped it to it, you're out of the, ca uh, the, the widgets and the, and the cash. With Bitcoin, you can now make that trade. You can sell them the 100 widgets, deplete your entire stock knowing that you have actually gotten paid. Uh, so that's really quite important and, and, and impressive. So, uh, you know, she really hates when I do this, but I think I can just, you know, proceed to check it out. <laughs> and, you know, we'll really, we'll run it. We'll go. Oh, she's going to get this tomorrow uh, morning when she wakes up. And she's just going to laugh. She's just going to say. And by then, there'll be many, many confirmations. Um, hmm. Oh, where is it? Well, I got another wallet on here. I think I, 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 I have internet on this, see? so this should work. So let's, let's take a look. So uh, yeah, I'm a returning customer. Um, oh, Uh, yes, I, I got to log in real quick. Wait on my, my battleship. <coughs> all right, so should say, yeah, all right. Uh, let's go through this. Again, I did this because I didn't know if my, my cell phone would work, and it actually it's about to die. So it, this was smart right before I left. I better double, double check. Um, uh, let's just let's just make a purchase over the internet using magical internet money, uh, and I'm buying cosmetics that I will most likely not use. All right, my end. Come on, I'm in. All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let's just refresh. All right. I'm going to do this. Oh my goodness. Yes, I'm alive. Yeah, there I am. Yeah, also with the password manager, you can have really long passwords too. So it's good like that. Okay, trust me, it's really magical when you start buying stuff on the internet. <laughs> This was all done with APIs from Coinbase. Why Coinbase? It was, it's a. Uh, it's down the road. It's just. <laughs> any minute. Okay. It's like yes. I, w I would like to place my order. I'm going to pay with Bitcoin. Any minute now, and then we're going to just. It's going to be magical. Establishing secure, secure connection. There you go. Boom, 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 send. Yes. Push. Success, it says. Is it success? It's success. We just get it done. Done what? I bought, I bought some, I got, I got something. So there you go. I mean, what this does really is, you know, allow you to now have an e-commerce site such that you're not beholding to Visa, MasterCard, whatever. Um, in this case, I'm using Coinbase. 
uh, you could have it straight Bitcoin. They're going to do the conversion to U.S. currency for me, but you could use Buna coin. So you know, whereas Visa might charge you three percent, they're going to charge you to convert that to fiat one percent, and they have all the uh, uh, risk. Uh. Oh yeah, so. So I have many wallets, as you can see. I got one on my phone, one on my Android device, physical wallets, hard, hardware wallets, paper wallets. Got a lot of wallets, right? But there you go. So you can use this. This this is a, a website that was used uh, using APIs powered by Coinbase. You could use Unicoin. They have the same exact uh, 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 base uh, uh, APIs. <coughs> I was thinking, you know, some, you know, folks, not everyone has a, a, a Bitcoin address. We have the Unicoin uh, vouchers to create a Unicoin uh, a, a wallet. Actually, I'm not allowed to. I asked them. They told me no. Uh, but uh, I have, so they're, they are basically like Coinbase, right? This is, you know, the same idea. If you, if you didn't, if you haven't seen them, let's just go to their website. Oh, yeah, let's get some. So there you go. Basically, they're they're an online wallet provider that allows you to go between fiat currency to Bitcoin. They have a number of different APIs to allow one to go between. Um, very much like Coinbase, uh, where I'm from. So same idea. Um, Okay, guys, I think we'll call it a night for the public presentation. Uh, join me in thanking Jennifer Flowers. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Hey, you want one? Who will be the reach map? Because I'm, I'm not a citizen. <laughs> you guys got it here? What? I like how you think it. Uh, like, don't even, don't ever go to fiat because I mean, not Bitcoin's the way to go. You know, go yeah. The whole point of using them is if you want to transfer and change fiat currency to Bitcoin, they make it convenient and easy. Or, you know, you could, uh, you know, uh, sell items online, like makeup to get Bitcoin, sell services, you know, to get Bitcoin, earn Bitcoin. Many different vectors. Like, what? Litecoin? Dogecoin, Litecoin. Oh, well, actually, that's true. Coinbase, the company, operates in America and India. I think so. But they're all the same. Tomato, tomato. They're going to ask for all your ID. You got to give them a copy of your shoes. I mean, it's just, it's all know your customer, know your business. What? It is not illegal in India. I ask. A lot of people think that. A lot of people think that in America too. It's not illegal. They, they, these guys have got lawyers. The lawyers are good. <laughs>